First to Sebelius, Tennessee Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn joins me live now from, not, from Nashville again as we watch uh, the Health and Human Services Secretary continue her testimony there. Congresswoman, uh, you had your chance to question Secretary Sebelius last week. The administration working around the clock to get this website fixed. Official enrollment numbers will be out next week, we're told. Is that enough progress for you? No, it is not enough progress, and we certainly are wanting the problem to be remedied. And the amount of money they have spent, the deadlines they have missed, the waivers they have given, the delays that they have made, I think what we're seeing in the president's approval ratings is this is unacceptable to the American people. And I'm talking to a good many health IT specialists, and Craig, they're telling me they're very doubtful they're going to have these interfaces and the appropriate integration done so that it is a working system by the time you get to the end of November. What's causing them some of the, I guess, the biggest questions is what is going to happen January 1st and 2nd when people who think they're enrolled right. in the program go to hospitals and they can't be found in the system. Congresswoman, you know, we, you and I have had several conversations on the air before. We've talked about Obamacare yeah. a number of times. And i got to be honest with you, it always sounds like that, that you're, you're sort of pulling against it. It sounds as if you, you don't really want it to exceed so that, you're, that your point is made. Would that be an accurate characterization, characterization or not? I think that uh, a more appropriate characterization is what we want to do is preserve access to affordable health care for all Americans. What we have seen with the president's health care law is that it is constricting and restricting access. It is restricting choice and options, and it is driving the cost through the roof. And that is not the way it was supposed to be. And, you know, Craig, I think that it's important every once that in a while when something is not not working to, to call talk a about ways, out to talk about ways to, to improve it. it to talk about ways <laughs> to improve it uh, I want to call your attention to Matt Miller's opinion in the Washington Post today I'm sure you've seen this at this point uh, he points out that nearly 50 million uninsured Americans will finally know what it's like to go to bed at night certain that they can't be wiped out financially by illness Obamacare's well insured critics you being one of them seem unable to imagine what it would feel like to be one of them. Why don't we hear, Congresswoman, why don't we hear from Republicans, Republicans about the need to, to find ways to get poor workers secure health coverage? Oh, you do. I mean, we have, look at the millions of Americans that have elected and chosen to have health savings accounts after those came in to the marketplace. I'm one of those. I like having a health savings account. And the president's health care law would eliminate many of these because not they would them, say it doesn't, and, and you're, it you're doesn't not, you're meet not the saying essential that health benefits. Savings accounts, you're not saying that health savings accounts are some sort of panacea. That's not what you're saying, <laughs> no, right? No, I'm saying it is an option. It is a, a wonderful option for people to have and has been very successful in the marketplace for with folks who can individuals afford. that are under 40 years of age. For folks who can also and afford to put money away every month in a health savings account. For individuals who are looking for cost-effective health coverage, health savings accounts have been very successful. Well, and another option, Craig, that would be a way to open up the health care marketplace is to have a cross-state line purchase of health insurance. What? Let individuals go to a website and choose whatever they want from whatever vendor in the country. Let them find something that suits the needs for them and for their families. Well, well, Give I have them here. the opportunity to make Holman. that choice. Well, I have you here. I, I do want to, before I let you go, I do want to get your reaction to Tuesday's election results. Tea Party backed conservatives defeated in Alabama, also in Virginia. Has, has the Tea Party lost some of its steam? Has it lost some of its influence? And I think that what you're going to see is the Republican Party uh, expand its tent. You're going to see more individuals there. I think we're all very pleased to see Chris Christie's win and the way that he reached out and brought people to his is leadership in action. And that's what people want to see so is Chris Christi, finding a way, Chris Christie finding is now a way the, to solve the, the problems bear. of today. I, I think that his win is big. I think that the Republicans... Uh, 
controlling the House of Delegates in Virginia. That is a big win. And I think, Craig, you and I are going to hear a whole lot about the analysis as they go through the elections and look at it uh, state Senate, uh, right. state House, district by district. Tennessee Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, thank you. Good to be Always with a you. pleasure. Thank you. Uh,